Hey, Fem, I've told, I've told Cabs, he's asked for money, so I've, I've told him to send the invoice to you, yeah? Anyways, we'll talk after, anyway. We'll talk after. <laughs> Jamal, you know the amount, anyways. Hey, it's too, it's too, it's too rich for us, man. It's too rich. <laughs>
game time or, you know, go abroad. But I'm thinking there's three months left to the season. You know, now's not the time to sort of go abroad and, you know, get stuff moved in. Um, so I thought, you know, the perfect step for me, you know, was to go back to the National League, you know, a level that I know quite well. And, um, yeah, I'm just looking to kick on and flourish. Obviously, I know the level because I've played there before. So I know what I'm going to get week in and week out. And I think it kind of suits me to a T because it helps me. Um, it brings me back down to remembering the things that sort of I remembered and what I had to bring into my game to get the move. So, yeah, now I think it fits perfect for all parties. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, listen, I'm not going to lie. From a selfish point of view, Cabs, I love that you're back. I'm not going <laughs> to I, I was driving to the game yesterday and it just hit me. I was telling Femme to change that. Bro, I actually got Cavs back. It was actually got Cavs back. And let the record show because your numbers are kind of scary. Let's be honest. Like, Oxford City played 42 games, 24 goals. Bournemouth, 79 goals. Sorry, 79 games, um, 38 goals. I know Femi assisted you on a, a few of them as well. Um, Chesterfield. He still complains that I didn't assist him enough, though. Hey, a striker is never happy, fam. We know that. We know that. Um, and obviously, Chesterfield, even better numbers, 44 games, 31 goals. But as you said there, the differences between the league, and I remember you got a tackle yesterday, and it was like a literally welcome back to the National League. The guy went straight through the back of you, didn't even get a foul. Everyone said, get up, play on. But what are the main differences between uh, the leagues that you noticed? Um... I think the first sort of word that comes to my mind, I think, has always been intensity. Yeah. Uh, intensity between the levels, I think there's a not. I wouldn't say there's a big gap. I wouldn't say it's huge, but there's that like slight different in terms of like the sharpness. Yeah. Like, obviously, you know, like national league level, the ball is just constantly like unless obviously if you got like a playing football team that will get the ball down and play. The ball's just non-stop. You're constantly fighting. You're constantly holding the ball up. You're constantly running in behind. Like, whereas I think League One, there's obviously like a calmness to it. Mm. There's a structure. Um, obviously, depending on the style of play and the manager as well, like, you're going to get like a Stevenage. You obviously play a different brand of football compared to, say, like a Peterborough, where it's completely all down on the floor, play out from the back, you know, like, work their way up. So, I think there's various sort of forms, you know, that different teams have. Mm. Um, but I wouldn't say that like there's 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 a big difference. I think it just comes down to like the style of play and um, and what the manager wants to do. But I think the sort of first few words that I think would sort of come to my mind is the intensity of the different levels. I just want to talk about um, your character. It's just the character, we not camps for a second. Yeah. Now, it's an, it's admirable, you know, and this is why you're 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 my friend because I might see things in you and it inspires me. Um, mm. You 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 go, you get your move and whatnot in it, and me and you are on the phone weighing up the pros and the cons, yeah. about whether you should join the national league or whether you should maybe just stay at Fleetwood, you know, and whatnot because that was an option. You know, um, and we weighed up the pros and the cons, and obviously the pros outweighed the cons in terms of coming back to Boreham Wood. But what we, what I didn't tell you on the phone is that the way you bet on yourself, yeah, not not listen. A lot of people need to take note. You know, it's like you've been here, you've 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 conquered this league. You know what I mean? And you've got you've got, you've got everything to gain. Do you got what I'm saying? But the way you you you've put you've backed yourself. All right, I'm gonna come back down here. I'm gonna do my thing, and I'm gonna go back to Peterborough. You know, it's a risk. It's a risk that I know, I know not a lot of people wouldn't take. You know what I'm saying? So where do you get that confidence or that like mentality from? Where where's it? Because you've always had it, Cabs, since mm -hmm. I've known you. I'll give you many more examples. You know, so where where did that come from, bro? I think you just got to believe in yourself. you got to believe in yourself. I think there's, 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 obviously at the moment, in terms of sort of my record in the league, that hasn't been great. 
obviously I know that, but I also know that I haven't had a lot of opportunities. So the reason as to why I think I dropped down to the level at National League level, you know, three, four years ago was because I wanted to prove myself and I could only prove myself if I had a platform, if I had a if I had a system that was in place that believed in me, you know, that I can sort of go out there and fire goals and help a team and contribute and all of that. So that belief I think has always been there. Um obviously the last the last sort of year has been a bit frustrating because I've gone from sort of three or four years where I'm playing week in and week out and I sort of know within myself that I'm the main man in a lot of these, you know, like Oxford City, Boreham Wood, Chesterfield. Um, and then obviously coming up the levels, I kind of knew that, you know what, like this is a different world. Um, you've got to be patient. You've got to, um, you know, wait for your moment to sort of take your chances. But I think sometimes I kind of wish that I had that bit of a grace in terms of, you know, because that move came off the back of um, obviously the horrible injury that I had. So in terms of like match sharpness and whatnot, um, I kind of lacked in that. So I kind of knew the importance of, you know, getting that minutes, get the getting those minutes earlier on. And, you know, I think had I had those coming off the back of the move, I think I would have been a lot more sharper. Um, so I think, you know, I kind of, I kind of got to give myself a bit of a grace of that as well, you know, just, you know, remember that that move came off the back of, you know, a difficult time in terms of minutes. So I've got, uh, like, I know myself, like, I know that I can get goals at the level. I know that I can do very well at the EFL, but that can only happen by me showing people that I'm fit again and by me showing that I can get goals again. So I know that. I know that I've come down to Boreham Wood and I can know that I, I know that I can show you that. So it's just about time. No, for sure. Do you know what? I love that's a great question by Femi, first of all. Um, and football's a roller coaster that we all know. And your career is a testament to that. Like you've felt the highs and the lows already at such a young age. You've scored over a hundred goals in maybe two hundred games, but you've also had, as you said there, the leg break a failed move uh, once or twice that you probably had your heart set on. How do you manage to deal with the highs and the lows? Because for me, like scoring 100 goals, I feel like, bro, maybe this guy's bored of goals. Like, why do you still celebrate? It's like normal to you. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what I would do. But how do, you, how do you balance the two? Because there's extreme highs and extreme lows of a baller and you're the one that's felt them all. So how do you handle it? Yes, to be fair, that's a great question. It's not easy, you know, it's not easy. But I think the first thing that I always say, family and faith, man, family and faith. I think my mum, my mum and my dad sort of keep me grounded a lot, man. So they kind of always bring me back to remembering my roots and, you know, remembering where I come from. So that kind of keeps me, you know, sort of low on my feet um, to sort of just appreciate everything in life, you know, be grateful because... I know that I've come a long way, obviously, to be in a position that I'm in today. And, um, yeah, so it's that. And then I think the other thing would be faith, like my faith of God, you know, my belief in him, I think, is a big factor. Um, I know that he has a purpose. I know that he has a plan. And I know that, you know, not everything will always be up, 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 up. You're going to have times where, you know, you're going to be faced with a lot of challenges. And, you know, during sort of, like, the, the leg break and then, you know, failing a medical with Birmingham. Those are all obstacles that I needed to overcome. So, you know, but there were situations that were there to build me up. So I can't complain about those things because I know that irrespective of all of those things that have happened to me, it's a challenge, like, it's a build-up phase that I know that, you know, that God is going to make me stronger in. So I've always had that firm head that things are going to work out. And we're going to get to um, a fa the failed medical in Birmingham. We're going to get to that. Um, but also, you could have literally gone yeah, to any National League club in this division. Um, that, that, that's just the reality of it. And anyone would have snapped their finger off to, to take you. 
Why did you choose Boromut? You know what? Obviously, the connections there, and like, obviously the ones that are still there, like yourself, Jamal, uh, Marshy, and obviously the gap is still there. So, but I knew that Boromut would, would, would be a good challenge. I think I would say out of all the three clubs that I've been at, at National League level, um, Oxford City, when I think they're in Conference South, Chesterfield, Boromwood. Boromwood was the club for me that, like, okay. Because it's one of those ones where, like, you've got to, like, roll your sleeves up a bit. Like, you know that the style of play isn't going to be tiki tacky. you know. You know you're not always going to get the perfect ball, you know. Like, at Chesterfield, obviously, the brand of football is obviously different. And, obviously, the style of play is obviously different. I know that, you know, being at Boreham Wood, I might get two chances. <laughs> and I know that I've just got to be deadly in that. Like, But I like that, though. I like that, though, because I think it keeps me sharp. It makes me want to have that sort of hunger and that desire to know that, you know what, if I'm getting this one, I'd better put this one away. And I think that's what made me... I think that's what kind of started a phase in terms of me being like a clinical forward at the level. You know, I think when I was there a couple of years ago, there were games where um, I would literally be waiting night for 90 minutes, then I'd get that one chance at the end. And I know that I have to put this in the back of the net because obviously the team relied on me a lot. So I think it's, I think for me, it's just about getting back to that. I knew that this would obviously bring a serious focus within my game that, I need, you know, at this current moment in time. Um, there needs to be a focus, there needs to be a hunger, and it needs to sort of bring me back that 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 memory. So um yeah, I think um that was a perfect fit for me, I think. So what about when you go to your former clubs? Like obviously we're gonna we played Oxford City twice, so you don't get the homecoming that you you're probably hoping for there. But we do have Chesterfield in a couple of weeks and they're absolutely flying this year. Um, obviously, Femi calls their stadium the Shake My Head Stadium. And there's there's a few naysayers out there, Cabs, but there's naysayers everywhere. So what do you say to those guys that think, oh, yeah, he's not going to be able to replicate? Like, I, I'm lot, I, I read the comments. I don't know why, but mm. I find it funny because I look at it and think, you lot don't even know what's going to happen. Like, I can't wait to come back. I've, I've, I've saved all of them and I can't wait to go back at the end of the season and reply. I'm gonna reply for the first time in your in your honor. But does that does that uh bring anything to mind for you or do you just brush it off? No, I think I think people are always entitled to their comments, aren't they? Like you know what Twitter's like, like everyone's entitled to what they want to say and whatnot. But as for me personally, like building up to that game, I know what I need. Yeah. And obviously I know that. Boreham Wood are going to provide me with the sharpness and the fitness that I need. Yeah. So I can't wait. To be fair, I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. You know, I think I think I would like to think that um, I've had a great time there. I've had a great time there. So I'd like to think that I'll get a good reception from the fans and whatnot. And um, yeah, like I'm, I'm I'm buzzing for that game. I, can't I mean, they're going to win the league anyway, so they've got nothing to they've got nothing to be pissed yeah. off about at the moment. Do you yeah. know. What I mean? I think some of them might be a bit upset though, because I think as soon as I signed for Warren Wood, actually, I got a few comments. Ah, oh, you should have stayed, and you know, you should have come to Chesterfield. So I think that kind of love, you know, that I had there was, you know, was was I think for me the best that I've had, you know, from sort of like a fan base. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to think that you know that you know that they'll take me in quite well, you know, in oh, that sure. game. Yeah. No, but what I will say is for every per for every person that was maybe doubting, there was two or three that were definitely happy for you and bigging you up. So you've definitely still got some supporters out there, none more so than the ones that are at Bourne Wood, man. So as we say, we, we don't even look at the negatives, man. We we focus on the positives. Oh, yeah. We're, we're gonna quick. We're, I want to quickly touch on you yeah, before we get into the fixtures. I want to quickly touch on. Um, and I, know I don't think we're gonna get to the fixtures today, fam. I don't think we're gonna. Get to the <laughs> No, I want to quickly touch on um, what Jamal said about the highs and the lows, isn't it? And um, I want to talk about the the injury, the injury, the leg break you suffered, didn't it? You know, 
Um, I remember at the same time, just before you got injured, I, I had done my Achilles, didn't it? You know, so we kind of went through this process together. And I remember there was a game in particular where Chesterfield had Boreham Wood. Um, and it was at Boreham Wood Stadium. And Cabs, Cabs said he's coming down to watch the game. So me and Cabs went and got food to eat before the game. And I was in my brace. Cabs was in his brace. <laughs> and was sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> talking about <laughs> injury and like, we were both flying yeah. before we got injured or whatnot and it was I'll never forget that's one that's one meal or one seat in that I'll never ever forget no matter where I go in this life because it was deeper you know what I mean it was deeper um, but you bounced back you bounced back and because of the work you put in um, prior to that injury and post injury as well because you've got there's, there's so much credit that um that goes unnoticed when you're you're dealing with an injury to get back fit and then come back and still score goals. That that got you your move. Um and on transfer deadline day 2022, you got the phone call from Birmingham. So I just want you to just talk about that experience. Yeah, no, nah, to be fair, that experience was crazy. Like, you know what? Ever since that day, yeah, I said to myself, transfer deadline day moves, I don't wish that upon anybody. <laughs> but I think going into it, yeah, it's weird, like, and obviously my agent could obviously vouch for me for this. I always had that, like, I wanted obviously the moves to happen a lot earlier within the window, just because I think I had that, like, worry within myself that oh like something could potentially you know go wrong in terms of the scan or the MRI so that fear that um fear factor was always there um so I think on transfer deadline day um you know here's me going home thinking yeah my day's done like, I'm still going to be a Chesterfield player and then uh, my agent calls me goes um yeah like get ready we're going to Birmingham I go what from National League to Champ so obviously the excitement's there the bubble's there um but as I'm doing the drive obviously me in a car with because I'm actually quite worried because obviously I knew that I was fit I knew that I was fine but something within me you know just wasn't quite sure that I was 100% correct and obviously, I've never ever done like a proper medical. So when I got there, um, they've checked both of my ankles, they checked my knee, they checked my hips, they checked my heart. I'm thinking, damn, this is no proper, proper medical, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, so I do my medical now, and um, you know, I get back to the training ground to sign the paperwork. So then, um, yeah, like. I kind of knew within myself that I had that kind of like worry that something within my ankle just didn't feel right because when I came back, I'm kind of like, like I'm running, but it seems like as if like my running form just doesn't seem to be right. Like I kept obviously like asking like the physios, um, you know, like, is this, is this um, thing that's there? Like, is it an issue? They were like, no, 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 it's fine. Obviously, over time, like, it's going to gradually get better. Like, your body's just going to adjust to to obviously what's there. So, um, but I just knew that in the back of my mind, like, I've got to be really cautious with this because I don't know, like, something was just telling me within myself that I needed, I think what had, what had, what, what had happened with the move was that the move came too early. In terms of, I didn't have enough games within myself to prove that my ankle could cope through the minutes, through the training regimes and whatnot, that, you know, that what's there wasn't an issue. So, um, I think because the Birmingham move came, I think it was after, it was right at the start of the season. So, I think it was after about six, seven games. And obviously, I didn't start pre-season with Chesterfield until... 
until later on. So I think I started. I, I played. I, I came on in the last game of the of of um, pre season. So fitness wise, already, I didn't have enough time and challenges to put obviously the ankle through the work to see if you know like it's sustainable. It's not gonna be an issue or anything. Like it's not gonna affect you or anything. But you know, you need you need you needed more game time to sort of prove it. We don't know how he's going to cope at this level with what's there. So, you know, he's jumping up from the National League to Championship. So the intensity of the level is going to be demanding, like the training is going to be demanding. Like we need to know if his ankle is going to be able to cope with, obviously, like the game time and the training regimes and whatnot. So um, that was what they were saying. Um, and obviously, remember when I said that the move came off the back of, I think it was six, seven. Like I didn't play a lot of games at the start, so um, you know they went back and forth. And um, I'm looking at the time now, thinking, like, "Yo, Jefferson, like you got to get this done. Like this is Birmingham, you know. Not many players get to jump from National League to to camp straight away, you know. Like you, you've got to find a way to make this work for me. So." Um, I think they were just going back and forth. I think they couldn't come to an agreement. And then, um, yeah, I ended up going back to Chesterfield. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, that drive that drive home must have been... That must have been full of so many different emotions. Yeah, no, nah, it was tough. It was so many different emotions. emotions. And, I think and... What's mad is Chesterfield were really good with me in terms of that. And, you know... Yeah, I appreciated that from them. Yeah, you're human. You're human. You got to process something like that. That's that that that's a life changing opportunity mm-hmm. that may not come around again. So, yeah, hats off to Chesterford for allowing you that time. Um, and 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 that's why it's important to even go through emotions. We spoke about word of the week, and that was my word of the week last week. But you gotta go through it because, like, if you didn't go through it, you never know. It might have held you back, Cubs, and you. You might not be uh, a posh player, Peterborough player today if you didn't allow yourself to go through that and then say, all right, cool, I'm going to go again because next move came six months later. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you, let go, you, you went through it, you got it out of your system and then you cracked on. And then in January, you ended up going to the Peterborough. Um, how, did, how did that one come about? Um... I've always known about Peterborough's interest, to be fair, since I was at Bournemouth. This is my first season at Bournemouth. Um, I've always known about their interest. I think my in my second season, towards the back end, that was that's that was when the interest was actually quite strong. Because I remember seeing um, the director of football at one of our games at home. I think it was against... I think it might have been against... Either Willstone or Kingsland. I remember I saw Barry Fry in the stand watching me. So you decided to go for a hat trick? Yeah, yeah. I said, I can't lie. That day I needed to turn up still. I had to show him, <laughs> yep, yeah, right, cool. You know what? This price tag, yeah, you're going to have to take this one in because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had to, to be fair, like, they've kept a nine since then. So, um, They've always liked me as a player and um, they've always, you know, kept track of my progress. They were always sort of one of the teams that wanted to do the deals, you know, um, from my time when I was at Boreham Wood. Um, but obviously, the further on, when I went on to Chesterford, and obviously I did what I'd done, um, that's when um, bigger teams... Um, like the Birmingham's, you know, like we talked about um, starting to gather that interest. But Peterborough have always had an interest in my abilities. And obviously, I knew that going into that, you know, building, I've seen what they've done for other forwards, you know, the likes of, you know, Dwight Gale, Ivan Tony, who's recently, you know, destroying it in the prim at the minute. And I kind of saw that pathway and I thought I could see myself emulating and doing the same thing that they've done um, but I haven't come as of yet um, I've still got time you know 
um, there to show that you know that I can do it at that level. So it's just about being given the opportunity. Obviously, the manager is there now. He's the manager that signed me, so I know that he believes in my ability. So it's just about being patient and waiting for the right time. And hopefully, when that time comes now, obviously, like I'm coming into it sharper now. You know, it's fresher. You know, I want to get game time. I want to feel sharp. I want to feel stronger. You know, physically and mentally. And yeah, like um, hopefully in the summer, I'll take my chance. That's it. Hundred percent, Cavs. I need you to. Me and Femi, we've got a story that we love about you. Yeah, it's the first day we ever met you, Cavs. The first day, preseason day number one. Yeah, and anytime me and Femi talk about you, this is the story that we bring up. Now, I need you. I don't. You probably remember it, but you might remember it differently. So, please tell the viewers about the first day when the gaffer introduced you to the club. Do you remember? Bring this up. <laughs> you got my number. It's just Cab. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I bring it up because it's the day that me and Femi looked at each other like this and said, "You know what? We've got one. <laughs> this boy, he's ready. He's hungry." Because I'm not gonna lie, Cab. <laughs> me and Femi have been at Armwood for too long. We've seen too many players come through, and me and Femi know from the first day whether or not they're gonna survive. That's just the facts of it all. Fem, yeah. tell me if I'm lying, yeah? Day one, we know they're going to survive. Day one, we know. We can tell by their energy, their aura, what they're saying. You see when you step through the door and you, you stuck on the camera like that, yeah? Uh... <laughs> we knew. <laughs> we knew. Cavs, we've had players that have come from the level and scored many, many goals, come from a different level or come from a different team and, and had great seasons. It just doesn't work out. But please tell the viewers how that day went, I beg. Nah, that day was funny to me, man. Because to be fair, you two was even giving me a stick for this as well. Um, so yeah, so we've gone into the I think it was the I think we were doing analysis, weren't we? Yeah. Might have signed later on, yeah. I think we were doing analysis, I think it was either on a Thursday or Friday on a team, I think was was it one of our preseason games? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I've gone into the building now and the gaffer's introducing me. Oh, yeah, this is Kwame Kiranga. Um, he scored, you know, 37 goals for Oxford City. I was like, huh? Kappa. It's not 37. No, no, it's not uh, 32. It's 37 goals. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I can't lie. Like, I just, I just needed him to get those numbers right. Like, you can't just put my name out there and you're putting out false numbers. Like, get it correct. <laughs> So yeah, nah, that day was hilarious to be fair because yeah, everyone yeah. in the room it was just laughing at me like, hey. oh, yeah, God, he, he's giving it the big in and whatnot. No, I mean, it, right? You know what it is? Obviously, you're not even trying to do it to like be arrogant or cocky. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fact you take yourself so seriously, yeah? <laughs> that was the angle and anybody understood that's the angle he's coming from. Like, yeah. Joe, take this boy seriously. <laughs> Like this is not big time. He's actually being serious here. Do you, do you know what I mean? It was, it was that, it was that, and that's what killed me. That's what killed. taking five goals off me, you know. Those five goals can make a big difference, you know. Hey, five, some people got some people got five goals in the whole season. You're trying to take five. <laughs> hey, the rest was five from me. The rest, the rest was history, man. You went on to have a great, great season that day. But you know what I love about you? You don't dwell on the should haves and the could haves. Too many players let failed moves derail them, man. Do you know what I mean? We've we've seen so many players jump on Twitter and they're just bitter about it. They can't move past it, you know. So hats off to you for handling it the right way, man. Cab, that's one thing. One thing I really love about you. So long may it continue, bro. Long may it continue. Appreciate it, man. Um, I, think, I, I think with that as well, like this is obviously a testament to both of you two. To be fair. Because obviously coming off the back of the move from Oxford City to Bournemouth, I'm quite assured in terms of myself and, you know, in terms of doing the work, you know, and getting the work in. But I think going into Bournemouth, obviously we didn't even know each other at the time. Because I remember we always joke about it because it's always like, oh, we didn't know you, we didn't know you at this level, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, right, cool, you know what, you two will know me, don't worry about that. But... Um, <laughs> 
I think the support has always been there, isn't it? Like, I've always been strong mentally, but I think being around you boys, being around, obviously, when Gus was there, when Sorbo was there, like, Kano, like, it was a good group. It was a good group, to be fair. Like, I think we all stirred and pushed each other on in the right direction. And obviously, like, you two were obviously there, you know, to support us younger boys at the time, you know, with um, Kano and Sorbo especially. And yeah, man, appreciate that. No, of course. Big up Sorbo as well. He scored yesterday. He scored yesterday. But yeah, me and Femi, we've got to give you that tough love, man. Like, we've got to be slightly disrespectful to get to, to get the best out of you, you know? Yeah, we don't care about what you did last season. You're here now, bro. you got to do it again. Even better, you know? So, but yeah, when you come through, obviously Femi's got his militant regime in the gym. Mine's a little bit more relaxed, but we're still getting the work in. But yeah, you're going you're gonna to gravitate towards one of us, you know, and, and that's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. But um, let's get into the, let's get into these games, though. Obviously, we're going to go through some of the fixtures. Um, we all know about Chesterfield, so we're not even going to start there. But Barnett won the chasing pack, lost ground on Chesterfield. Uh, they played Willstone at home. Andrew won one. Callum Stead, a player that was at Bournemouth for a time, actually. Um, they were winning the game into the last... Literally, last second. 90 plus nine is when an equaliser came in from Willstone. Corey Andrew popped up with the, the goal in that one, Fem. Um, how have you seen Barnett in these recent weeks, Fem? Yeah, in these recent weeks, Barnett, um, there's been a lack of consistency. We all know they're a good team, you know. But just in their recent couple games, um, they, 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 they haven't been consistent with wins. And um, Chesterfield have really got away in, in this time. You know, um, Barnett are still third with 56 points. It's crazy because they're third and they've actually lost nine games this season. That's how crazy the league has been this year. They've lost nine games. But yesterday is just, it's just a blow. It's just an absolute blow. To concede in a 90 plus nine, ninth minute, like, I'm definitely losing sleep if if I'm, I'm a Barnet player. If I'm a Barnet defender, I ain't sleeping that night. Like, 90 plus nine, man. It's that about, you know? Even like when the um, linesman, like, like, like yesterday, I was actually looking at him like, how long are you going to put up? Bro? How long are you? When I saw seven, I was like, oh my days, with 10 men, like, you know. But um, yeah, like, good point for Wildstone, though, and David Noble as well, like, um, um, starting off strong, you know what I mean? Um, getting it, That's a good, good result for Wildstone. And, and Wildstone have had a great season. They've had a great season. And, they keep pulling results like this out the back. So they're, they're flying, they're flying. And, well, Barnet, look, man, they've still got 15 games to go. So their aim is probably to finish second place, if I'm being honest with you. I think first place is, is gone, you know. So well, it's gonna see we're gonna see what, what happens with regarding them on Bronley. They've signed one of the craziest signings I've seen in the, at this level before, Luke Freeman. And do you know what? Just on that point, what is the craziest signing that the National League has ever seen? And what I mean by crazy is, like, the biggest signing that the National League has ever seen. What, what's your thoughts? Because we had Elliot Lee that came from Luton. We've had that. We've had Will Grigg. We've had big signings. But Luke Freeman, he had just been promoted to the Premier League with Luton Town last season. Yeah. You all know that his career speaks speak for himself. He made his debut at Gillingham at 15 years old. I'll never forget that. I was watching it live, FA Cup. Um, right. Went on to sign for Arsenal, you know, and had an amazing career in the, in the Championship and played some games in the Premier League with Sheffield. I was at Barney. Where do you rank that? Where do you rank that level of sign in terms of because it's definitely, look, it's definitely top 10. So where would you... Definitely up there. I think top 10 might be even generous. It might be top five. Hey. Listen, 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 I would have assigned Joe Garner. Um, it's it's some big signings that have come out. I think Will Griggs huge. Will think, Griggs. And it's no surprise the goals he's scored. So, Yeah. Luke Freeman, Will Grigg. What about you, Kaz? What do you reckon? Yeah, the tough one. The tough one, to be fair. 
I'm trying to think what other ones are. Not cool, done not promoted. Uh, getting promoted from the champ to the prem is crazy, bro. You say Paddy Madden, Pat? Paddy Mad. You say Paddy Madden? Yeah, that's a good one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. And you can see when we played against him, you can see his quality. It just seemed like he had so much time on the ball. He was always picking a little pocket. Like, how did he even get in that pocket? And no one saw him. No one tracked him. So, yeah, that's that's a big one. That's a big one. For sure. I think Freeman. I think Freeman's a good one for them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think I would say Freeman as well. I would, I would say him as well. But do you know what, though, yeah? Obviously, he's got to deliver first and foremost. And secondly, you see Elliot Lee, yeah? The reason why, for me, is one of the biggest signs of National League has seen is because he actually destroyed the level. Like, he tore it to pieces. But it's like everyone knew he was going to do this and he still went and done it. Do you if, know we're, if, we're talking, if we're talking where a player's played, Jordan Ibe's got to be up there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jordan Ibe's got to be up there. He played his debut yesterday for Ebb's Fleet. This is a person that I remember Klopp shouting, I be like, he's a big player for him until he until he had these injury uh, issues. So that's another one. That's a big signing or a big name. Uh, and if he catches, if he catches anything like the form that he was displaying for Jurgen, Jesus. Actually, a good player. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, but talking about players and um teams making big signings. Femi, the club, your home, well, not hometown, but a, a club close to your where you where you're from, Bromley, made some big signings over the week. I think it was four in one day, wasn't it, Fem? They signed four in one day. They signed um Deji, Deji Eloeri. He's come back on the permanent. San Idris on Mateo, who I highly rate, and I, I'm backing him to do well there because he's a serious, serious player. They signed Kamal from Millwall and they signed um, Lewis from um, Worldstone. Worldstone. They signed him from Worldstone. So yeah, I tested you there, Fem. You come through with flying colours, you know. <laughs> hey, I tested him, you know. I had them written, but I know Femi's got this. I know Femi's got this. I, I did my due diligence. I did my due diligence. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just come on the show, as you know, and we just talk. We nah, 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 nah. I can't lie. I did think at the start you was a bit... I saw you look down a bit, so I thought, mm, nah. you got it, Jamal, you got it. Nah, you got it. Got it. finished it strong, to be fair. Listen, my right hand, my right hand knows, man. My right hand knows. <laughs> but again, as much as they make some great signings, 3,000 fans watch them at home lose to Hartlepool. There's a Riri popping up with a 16th goal of the season. Michael Cheek popping up with his 14th and Kamal Grant actually popping up with the winner in that game for Hartlepool. Um, Kevin Phillips, obviously we all know about him, coming in there. New manager seemed, the new manager bounce seems to be spreading around the, the National League. Mark Brown scored the own goal in his debut, not the winner. No. Not the winner for Hartlepool, but it was an own goal. Apologies. Apologies, you see. That's why that's why I feel right and again always correcting me. But yeah, I'm not even gonna edit that fam. We need that. Um <laughs> but yeah, listen, those two strikers, Michael Cheek and Desiree, boy, they literally know where the goal is. And cabs, it's your kind of company, man. So I'm I'm gonna put this one over to you, Cabs. What are you seeing from firstly those strikers and secondly, those two teams? Michael Cheek has always been up there though, hasn't he? Yes. He, he, the guy has always been up there to be fair in, you know, in terms of the goal I've always been looking over my shoulder just seeing how many like, yeah, okay, yeah. oh you do <laughs> that yeah to be fair yeah 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 he has he has, he has. like you, you've got to give it to him like he knows the level quite well he's always bagged goals like always season after season yeah. you know he managed to obviously produce um, for them so yeah that one is a is a tough one is a tough one, but I think in terms of consistency, season after season, I think I'm going to have to go back with you. Mm. Yeah. And Desiree, obviously, when he was at Salford, obviously in that, that playoff final single-handedly won it for them as well. Um, 
Hartlepool are a team that are probably disappointed to be 11th in the league. You know, as much as they did get relegated last year, I think they would have hoped to have a better season. But one thing I do know is it's the business end of the season. And our gaffer said that to us yesterday. Yeah, the, the results that happen in the early months, you want to get some form, but now it's the business end where it really matters. And it seems as though with the manager changes, the big boys are coming out to play, man. Um, moving on to lower down the league, AFC Fylde played Dorkin. Fylde now. Four wins out of five. One draw at the relegation zone yesterday after a 3-1 win. Used to Bassey popping out of a brace. Barrett popping up with a one as well. Matt Briggs getting one for Dorkin. Now, AFC fouled. It seems as though they've finally woken up. Because I remember when they was in the league before, they were the team that always challenging. They come close to promotion once, probably didn't work out. And everyone was surprised when they got relegated. And now they've come back up. It, it took a while for them to maybe get used to the level, but they seem to have woken up for them. What do you think? Sure, most definitely. Like you mentioned, four wins and five. Uh, that's great form. And Eustabasti is actually coming through, you know, he's scoring goals, scoring yeah. goals for them. Um, there was a lot of six pointers yesterday. There was a lot of six pointers, and that was a six pointer. And um, that win got far out the bottom four, but it's also dragged walk um Dorkin in it, you know. Dorkin allowed 19 from their um, two points. From safety, which is which is crazy. So, on both ends of the table, it's just like from from a from a um, fans or supporters point of view, it must be so it must be so exciting seeing how how the league the league table fluctuates week in week out. You know? yeah. But, uh, yeah, so yeah, big up foul though, big up foul, big win. Oh, for sure, for sure, and Eastley v Chesterfield. Now, Chesterfield need eight wins from 16 games to be crowned champions. And it's possible for them to do it by March. Before we get into that, are they the best National League team we've seen? Looking at what Wrexham did last year, looking at what Notts County did last year, Stockport the, uh, a couple of years before, what, we, what we're seeing from Chesterfield hasn't really been done before. They were literally walking the league. Would you say they're, they're the best team in, we've ever seen from Cabs? So I'm going to have to let you land on that one first. I want to hear your opinion on it first. Do you know what? Do you know what? Yeah. Um, I'm going to read something out. 30 games played, 25 games won. Two games drawn, three losses. Scored 75 goals and 35 goals conceded. You know, um, it's crazy numbers. It's crazy numbers. I feel like as a team, Chesterfield are definitely up there, you know, are definitely up there. Um, it, it, it's different to the, it's different to the Wrexham and Knox County thing because you knew when you're playing Notts County, it was Notts County, but there was Macaulay Langstaff as well. You know, uh, when you played Wrexham, it was Mullen and Elliot Lee. You know, but when you talk about Chesterfield, it's almost like, and trust me, I'm not, I'm not comparing them to to this team, but it's almost like Man City and and Pep, where it's a team. Thing, you know, it's a team thing. That, yes, you got Woolbrook that's scoring all the goals, but any any given day can be any one of them, and it's more of a team. Yeah. And and they're not known. They're not really known for one player in particular. Does that make sense? Uh, so it's more of a team thing. So for that reason, I've definitely got to put them up there because of what they they've they've done as a team, what they've accomplished as a team. Um, They've got, they've got, they've got 16 games to go. So I'll make my decision in 16 games time. Oh, you're still <laughs> on the fence, man. <laughs> I told you. We've got to wait to see it. No, I hear you. Oh, Cavs, what are you saying? To be fair, to go off the back of what Femi said, 
to answer your question, are they the best team? And obviously, I know that manager. Like I know Paul Cook quite well. Like I haven't, I haven't worked with him. I wasn't sort of privileged to work with him for a long time. But I know that he builds his team very, very well. Like he finds a way to 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 make his team strong and make sure that collectively everyone's chipping in. So it's like you see how like you've had previous promotions where a lot of clubs have used say like an eleven or fourteen, thirteen. He's so focused on making sure that collectively as a team everyone sort of you know everyone contributes to 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 to, to throughout um the season so to answer your question are they the best team but you know what as of now as of now i'd say yes i would yeah. say yes yeah on what on on what they've produced this season i would say yes but i think people will always say oh Wrexham aren't there or Stockport aren't there no more like they always have that saying oh the league is easier but I think to produce what they've produced this year is incredible so um, you've got to give it to them no you do you do and do you know what it is they're so efficient it's just like a machine that doesn't stop mm-hmm. it doesn't stop you take a you take a component you take one component out of the machine and put another component in and it just keeps going do you know what I mean it's just like Mandeville popped out of a goal yesterday. James Berry popped out of a goal. Will Grigg popped out of his 18th. But then next week, it might be Joe Quigley. It might be Tom Naylor. It might be Oli Banks. It might be Armando Dobra. You know, it's just... Yeah, we're running out of things to say. What I would have loved to have seen... They've done the right thing. They saw Wrexham and Notts County go up and they said, this is our chance. We're going to... We're throwing... We're going to throw everything at it. I would have loved to have seen them with this team last season. Because, nah, that would have been the best. Last season was a great title run. That would have been, that would have been incredible. Would have been. With the team they've got now, last year? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, let's talk about um, the Paul McCallum sending off. Yes. So, one sec. So, playing against your, your ex-club, a club that... <laughs> Maybe gave up on you a little bit. You got a point to prove. You're the top goal scorer in the league, 23 goals. You, you might, not to say this is what he did, but he might want to prove himself even more. And he got a red card, similar to Lee and Love yesterday. Pent up aggression, <laughs> things happen, you know. Um, <sighs> but it's a killer because playing against Chessford with 11 men, let alone 10, that's a task, man. Hey, hey. Cabs, meet one of your, meet one of your things. Oh yeah, sir. It's gone, yeah. Yeah. Oh, gone, yeah. Yeah. So Chris Maguire popped out of a penalty, a consolation. But yeah, that that red card is a killer, man. And I know, I know, McCallum, he would have been really disappointed. However, it happened because I haven't seen it. But it's always disappointing when you get sent off, especially against your. Your old club, you wanna you wanna put on a performance, you know? What do you think, fam? Yeah, um, it's just a narrative, isn't it? It's the narrative. You go, you go play against your former club, and you get sent off. But what's what's so crazy in the in the earlier fixture, um, a few months back, would Dolchester would be easily? He he was terrorizing the defense, you know. Why have you got three screens? Sorry. I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, look, the narrative, the narrative is you get sent off against your former club. So as soon as you see that, a lot of a lot of thoughts are gonna go in your mind. Oh, was he too eager? Was he too aggressive? Was he this? Was he that? You're gonna oh, it, it, it just happens because of the narrative, isn't it? Um, but what's 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 interesting is that a couple of months ago, in the fixture at the SMH Stadium, um, he actually he actually terrorized them. He actually terrorized the defense. Although they won a losing team, he, I think he scored a brace. You know, 
So yeah, it's, it's crazy that on the, on this fiction that he got sent off, but look, he's top goal scorer in the, he's top goal scorer in the division. Uh, he, he he'll be back. He'll be back. That's the best way to explain it, you know. For sure, for sure. Hopefully, it's not a free game ban. That's not what you need. But Cabs, you tell me, man. Chesterfield yesterday, your old teammate Mandeville. He wasn't there with Barry. He wasn't there with Grig. But talk to us. What have you? What have you seen this season from them? I think from what, because obviously I'm quite close um, with um, Chesterfield. So obviously here and there, obviously. I'm always speaking to him um, just to get like an update on sort of like the newer players. And from what I sense, um, he just says that there's like a real togetherness, I think, um, in terms of the team. And like I explained earlier on, like the manager's not, the manager's big on making sure and keeping the group collectively together and, you know, making sure that everyone's, you know, sort of grounded. So, I'm kind of always getting back a report from him that, like, the squad's very, like, in it together and there's no sort of, you know, you th you know the big names, like the Neil Griggs and, and you know, the Taylor in the midfield. Um, but there's no, like, big egos, you know, in terms of, you know, the bigger names. Everyone's, you know, focused on the task at hand. And I think the good thing about them as well that I, you know, sort of realised when he touched upon it when I spoke to him, when he says that you could score a brace one day and then if you don't have a good week leading up to the game, you could be on the bench. I love so that. to be fair, like there's a system that the managers got there that's, you know, perfect for them because collectively they have a good squad. Um, no, like single player thinks, all right, cool, like, let me just toss it off throughout the week and, you know, just think I can just have my feet up throughout the week just because, you know, the previous game you've done uh, um, you've um, done quite well. So there's a real structure of togetherness there. I think that they have that keeps everyone hungry, you know, and I think that's that's why they've done so well, you know, as, as a squad. No, I love that. I love that. I think... Obviously, winning breeds that togetherness. It's the clubs that are usually at the foot of the table where you see little divisions. And if you're not happy within a winning team and even to be in and around it, you usually get discarded and tossed to the side. Um, but talking about managerials, departures, in fact, F Suite manager Dennis Cutrib um, departed F Suite this week and they played Oldham. Big game, televised game on TNT. But that one ended in a nil-nil draw. Which was surprising because Mickey Mellon seemed to have got a tune out of his squad. Um, and they're currently in eighth, really vying for that playoff position. But a team that isn't seeming to let up is Aldershot. They beat a good Halifax team who obviously lost Melanick Ali in this window. Um, they won 2 1 away from home. Laurent Tollard popping up with his 20th goal in all competitions this season, four in his last four. Uh, Max Wright popped up with an equaliser, but Kwame Thomas proved a decisive factor with a winner in that one. Um, I was surprised to see him, um, Laurent Tollard in particular, stay during the window. Obviously, we saw Josh Kelly leave Solihull. Um, Femi, talk to me through that game and what you're seeing from those players. Yeah, um, massive win for all the shot. All the shot had a great season, you know, and as you were... Obviously, I already know the, the scorers and whatnot, but as you were even saying that, I was thinking, oh, Kwame Thomas. Oh, it's, it's, it's so on. Imagine, imagine playing 70, 80 minutes and then you see Kwame Thomas getting warm and coming coming off the bench and just that, you know, it's they've got they they kind of got strength in, strength, strength in depth, you know, which is which is good. And Tolaj is flying. Tolaj will get his reward soon. He'll get his reward soon. He might. Not everyone goes in six months, you know. He might need this full season. They did just trigger. They did just trigger his option, though. Yeah, he might. He might need. He might need a season. He might need two. Like, like, kind of like. Well, we've got Cubs here now. Cubs. It's a Cubs three seasons. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's no. That's that's not taking anything away from from Tolaj. He, he's flying. He's flying, and I'm sure that he'll get his reward soon. 
And he, but to be fair, he's even getting it in his club. They're fifth on the table, and look, they're definitely probably thinking like, yeah, we need to get playoffs. Let's get playoffs. They're not thinking that then something's up. So I'm sure they're all thinking that in the building. And you already know how playoffs goes, man. Once you're there, it's just about who has, who has. Um, I don't know if I can say balls are still. Um, <laughs> that's what, that's all that's all it is when it comes to the playoffs. So. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how the season continues. No, for sure. Um, and another striker who seems to be finding form again after an injury layoff is in the FEM. Up to 12 for the season. Seven in his last 11 games. Popped out of a brace and the winner yesterday against Rochdale. Ty Sinclair, one of our past guests, popped out of a goal, so well done to him. But it wasn't enough as uh, Dagnan Redbridge ran out 2-1 winners. Cabs, it seems like the strikers league this season. Is it the fact that National League defense defenses have gotten worse or the strikers have just got better? Which one is it? You know what? Great question, you know. I, I, I was literally thinking about this. Um I think a couple of weeks ago. Because I think I must have looked at the table just to see where everyone was. And it's weird, like it seems like as if like there's a there's a theory now with strikers because before, I remember my first season at Boreham Wood before, that was kind of like the era where forwards were hitting the 1920 mark. And that was sort of like the peak of its, you know, the standard. I think my first season, I think I I think Quigley ended up beating me. Um, Scott Quigley. He ended up getting 20 or 21, I think it was that season. I'm not quite sure, but. All of a sudden now, I think there seems to be a thing where strikers are getting over 25 goals a season. So I don't know, you know, to answer that, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I kind of first saw it in sight when I was at Chesterfield. Um, you know, for me personally, I was sort of the personal term that I had before um, I had my injury. So I, I don't know how to answer that. I, I, think, I think it's a mixture of both. I think the quality... In um, the opposition, I think has improved in terms of like the tactical work. Yeah, um, I think that's improved massively. And obviously, you know, there's certain individuals who's obviously been at the level that knows the league in and out. You know, like Paul Mullen this year. Um, no, poor Paul Mullen. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? I forget his name. You know, what's him? Paul Mullen. No, he's not Paul Mullen. Yeah. Obviously, Paul Mullins done well in the past, yeah. um, but the Paul McCallum, that's the one, sorry. Paul McCallum's the one, yeah. Like, he obviously knows the league in and out, and um, he's done, you know, very, very well. So I think he'll know, you know, to get in the right areas, you know, because he's been at the league for quite a while, you know, it's no surprise that he's hit those numbers. But I think the structure, I think, of the teams that are higher up has changed, which has allowed. Um, I think more goals to be scored. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's been a big transformation. Do you know? Do you know what I love about you, Cabs? You break down strikers like it's a science. <laughs> it's incredible. Like you really dissect and think and study. I can tell you're a student of the game, and that's one thing. Obviously, not that I can tell, but I know that of you. Like how you yeah. read the game, how you read players, how you read teams. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy here. Yeah, so, so Cavs, we didn't talk about this. Um, in your first season at Chesterfield, if I'm correct, you were on 26 goals in 26 games. Yeah. Yeah, man, it was crazy. It was crazy. You know what, yeah? Because off the back of that season... It was February, by the way. That's uh, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? <laughs> off, off the back of that season, um, I kind of went into it thinking, you know what? Like, I'm just going to get, like, I've only ever got maybe, let's say, four and one, I've got 23, you know, for the season. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, this is going to be another season where I think my benchmark was always going to be 20. But that year, we were flying. I don't know. I think credit has to go to the manager at the time, I think, because tactically, 
you changed my game to a whole new level. Whole new level. I think at Boreham Woods, I was obviously like an all round, you know, type of player. Obviously, I would drop in, I would spin in behind, but obviously, like the team, like the structure of the team knew my strength was was to stretch in behind. But at Chesterfield, obviously, he knew all my stats, he knew my game, and he literally just said to me, I do not want to ever see you dropping in, you are the last man. So everything literally ended with me. So whether it was a cross, whatever it was, I was just on the end of everything. So, you know, I think that's a big credit to the manager because he sort of knew my qualities and he knew how to sort of maximise it. Um, and I think that was um, what sort of helped me and, you know, paid me to, to, to get such numbers. Was that was that the season that we played against you at your place? And Ooh. was that that, was I, that that season? Are we going to talk about that? I don't know. I don't know if you saw it. What do you mean? No, nah, <laughs> should we talk about that game? I don't. I don't think we were going to talk about it. So. But, but I can. Nah, because obviously, if we're on about the head to head with you two, obviously I don't know if you two have ever beaten me, so I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can I remember a picture. Yeah. I remember a picture where me and you were battling. I remember you and Femi going toe to toe in the channel one time. I was watching all. I could see you both going for the ball like this, head to head, head to head. I just saw a big for that. This was all my days. Listen, listen, listen. Obviously, we haven't beaten Cavs in it. Yeah, when we played against him, but Cavs knows when he's played against me, I'll beat him up. <laughs> I know this. I know this. You know when you're playing against someone and you're giving it to them. Yeah. Yes, I have scored hair, that's good, but he knows <laughs> he was in a battle. Like he knows this. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Absolutely trying to play against us regular. He knows in training we used to beat him up every day, so he knows, man. Oh, but it, do you know what it was? Yeah, it's the way Cavs chases that ball, bro. That's the <laughs> one that he you you have to come a hundred. No. Oh. It's peak. Oh, you, Cavs, Cavs is chasing the ball like the ball owes him money. That's how he chases that ball. <laughs> <laughs> like, he wants that to ball. Be fair, to be fair, that day, to be fair, I was actually quite surprised because usually we're the ones that dominate teams. Oh. So the game when we played against shoes, um, I thought, whoa. Because we won that game 2-1, but it didn't feel like it was like a... We usually win games comfortably. Like back then, it was just a comfortable win. You know, we'll breeze past teams, comfortable, keep the ball. But when you guys turned up that day, the way, like, it wasn't an easy win. Like, we had to work for that. So, you know what? I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Because, boy, that, 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 that game there was not an easy game. <laughs> uh, it's, that's, that's what we like to hear. That's Bournemouth's mantra. Words of Luke Garrard. No game against Bournemouth's game. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, just going to put this in the atmosphere, right? And we don't even need to go into it, but if Cavs didn't get injured that year, he would be the record top goal scorer in the National League. <laughs> nah, facts. 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 You know? And as much as my old teammate, Macaulay Langstaff, probably the record holder, Paul Mullen, probably one of the best strikers that the league's ever seen, Cavs, you're in that company, man. And that's not even me being biased. That's not even me saying it because you're here. Like, that's just that's just it. Like even Danny Jameson, um, the reporter for uh, TNT, said exactly the same thing. He had so many good things to say about you. He's excited to see what you're going to do as well. So, yeah, man, it's it's exciting times. It's exciting times. Um, but Fem, talk me through Kiddy Mister Harriers. Kiddy played Oxford yesterday. Now. Both promotion winners, one from the National League South, one from National League North. Josh Parker, I guess from last week, popped out of his 11th goal this season. They were 2-0 up at halftime. Now, Phil Brown has gone in there, started life well, ended up winning that one as well. Now, we all know about his famous, infamous halftime team talk on the pitch against Hull City. I'm not sure he did that. I probably, I like, he probably told them all to sit on the floor. <laughs> Hey, I'm not gonna lie. He's lucky. It's like this. 
We're lucky yeah. we played them twice already because the form. Hey, who's got the footage? They, they might even they might even kept them outside, you know. I'll find that footage. We're gonna find that footage. But three two winners: Amari Morgan Smith, Lambert, or Mateo. Three two winners. Fem, talk me through this, bro. The Phil Brown works is in full effect, and I'm not gonna lie. I know Kid, Kid Minister ain't up there in the table, but I'm kind of happy we've played them twice already because what's this, the fourth win in a row, you know, um, under the new manager? And even when we played them under Russell Penn and we were winning, like, at their place, it got a little bit sticky to hold on to that win. Like, it's, it's a night, like, when, 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 when Kid Minister are at home, the fans are behind them, and they're trying to get back in the game. And then they've got that big strike and Omateo up top and they're just hitting him. And yeah, it's long. It's long. It's long. So I'm kind of glad that we've played them twice already. 100%. It's a Phil Brown. We might have to rename him Darren Brown, the, the, the illusionist, the, the magician, because what he's doing is it's crazy. crazy. Oh, Josh Parker. We had Josh Parker on the show last week and he scored two. And we already know he's. Um, um, he's a great character, you know what I mean? And and he he, he really believes that Oxford are going to survive and he's he's wearing on his chest two goals, you know what I mean? So he's really doing his bit. His bit. I know that's, um, that's, that's sent them down to the bottom of the table and the five points from safety. So I know that it's really, really... Um, it's tight down there, but Oxford are kind of slipping away. They're kind of slipping away, so they kind of need to get a grip. Yeah, for sure. And, and we've seen what a new manager can do for a team, but we've also seen what losing players and managers can do. Now, Solihull Moors lost Josh Kelly to AFC Wimbledon on deadline day, and they played Altenham, who have been flying themselves, fourth place. Alex Newby pops up with the winner in that one when it was 1 0. Sully, who are at home, by the way. Can we, can, we, can we talk about that Josh Kelly move? Because <laughs> we love to talk about Gus. <laughs> We're going to talk about Gus. Because let's be honest, let's be honest. They've <laughs> lot, they had a lot of departures early on. <laughs> and they brought in Gus, and now they've lost Josh Kelly. No, but Gus, about Gus's reaction. That's what I want to talk about. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he was happy. We got the obviously we got the we got we got we got told yeah. before and whatnot. Yeah. You see that heartbreak, yeah? You see that message? No. That, hear it in that the message. Boy was really upset, you know. The guy <laughs> even called me. The guy even called me to have a conversation. He's like, "Yo, you know, Josh Kelly's gone now." I, I said to Gus, "Gus, like I told you, because obviously Josh Kelly's um his agent is the same as my agent." Yeah. So like I kind of like pre warned Gus, like Gus, like Josh Kelly could potentially go, you know. Gus didn't want to believe me. He was like, oh, nah, nah, I don't want what. And now look at him. The guy was all calling me up and like, having a conversation. The guy's upset and that. So, but now, nah, big up to Josh Kelly, I think. I've never seen, I've never, like, like, you see this deadline day, yeah? So obviously, we've seen moves happen, yeah? But obviously, Gus is like my brother. So, like, I've, ne I've, ne it was, I've never been on the receiving end of it. But that was the first time I've seen somebody on the receiving end of losing one of their main players on deadline day. I yeah. felt Gus's heart break. Like, I felt it. <laughs> you, see that, you, see that, you see that tandem of Mark Beck and Josh Kelly? Yeah. Bro, Josh Kelly and Mark Beck, as we said before, it was that Peter Crouch and Michael Owen. Like, it was just a perfect partnership. And I said to Gus, I'm buzzing because I don't have to chase that boy. You see that? You know how quick that boy was? He was so rapid. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what Josh Kelly is, yeah. He is like, like maybe, look, he's rated, he's rated in the National League. But if you were to ask defenders in the National League, who do you not like playing against? He's like your player's most feared, one of the, one of the player's most feared strikers, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it, to the masses, it might not be like, oh, Josh Kelly, yeah, yeah, yeah. But inside, as players, everyone knows when you play against Josh Kelly, it's it's a long day. You know what I mean? 
have to be on like you can't switch off because he's closing you down, he's behind you, he's next to you. He's just yeah. Anyway, talking about strikers, South End versus Gateshead. Marcus Denanga got his 13th goal. It's been a while since he scored, but even so, he popped out of another one. 6,000 South Bend fans watched that game. Cabs, have you seen much from Gateshead? Um, obviously, you haven't been in the league for a while, but have you? did you see what they've been doing this season? Um, obviously, I know of the brand of football that they've played. Um, yeah. I obviously know that they've have they they've now lost two managers, haven't they? They've um, lost their yeah, they lost their assistant and then well their basically their management team, yeah. Okay, yeah. So but I know that the brand of football there, you know, is really, really attractive. So I'm not surprised, you know, because there there's been a big dip in form from them to be fair. I think, um, as of lately, but they'll be up there, I think. They're a very, very good footballing team and I think once they They've lost a few big players as well, haven't they? Because I've seen one of the one of their boy went to um, that hey, was Dons. alone from Barnsley, ended up going to MK Dons. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. So um, I think it would take time for them to sort of find that sort of structure within themselves. Yeah. But um, I think once they find that, I think they'll be up there again. Yeah. And Femi South End now, South End fans, please don't take this the wrong way, but. Since you guys have been taken over and everything seems a little bit more smooth, it seems like everyone's taking their foot off the gas. Femi, what do you think? Do they need to maybe put out a statement just pretending they're in financial trouble again? <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, serious. They were flying. When they had a 10-point deduction, no one was getting paid. <laughs> No one was knowing what's going to happen next. They were roughing teams up. Now, it just seems as though they're stuttering a little bit. No, I hear you. Like, when your back's against the wall, you ain't got a choice, innit? You're in a jam, like, the only way, like, bro, like, the only way you got to, you got to fight, innit? You got to get, your, <laughs> get out of that rut. You know what I mean? But now everything, everything's comfy. Everyone got money now. You know what I mean? Everyone's signing <laughs> deals and that. But, yeah. I'm here for to you, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Rest of this season, and we go again next season. That's the vibe I'm getting from South End. Like, all right, let's 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 ride out this season and go again next year. I think that's the energy I'm getting from them. Mm. We we know they're a good team, and on a positive note, it's glad that a lot of the players have are committed to the club. Um, one in particular, um, Caldwell. Exactly. He's, he's a very very good player, and. and They've managed to, to to pen them down for another two years, which must be a massive, massive boost for South End. So we know what they're about. We know what they're about. They're a lot of good players in that team. And I'm sure that they'll this season, it might not be the season for them. You know, I'm gonna say that. But um next season, next season, they're definitely a team to look at. Yeah, a lot of teams to look into next season. Um I've got a question for you two actually. Because yeah. obviously I haven't I haven't been so you see the like of Oldham this year, obviously we've got them soon. Would you two say that they were supposed to be? You see how last year it was Wrexham, Knox, Chesterfield. Yeah. Obviously, you look at their recruitment and what they've done. Would you two say they were supposed to be, or would you say they are the closest? Well, they were supposed to. Well, they were supposed to. Need supposed to be the closest to sort of Chesterfield this year. Obviously, I haven't played against them in the first game, yeah. but I know that they've already played um, at Bournemouth Wood, so we've got them in a couple of weeks, so it's going to be interesting to see that, but would you two say that they were supposed to sort of be like the knots of, or the Wrexham of, you know, this year? 100%, bro, 100%. Uh, going, into the, going into the season, taking it back to August, July, August, it was... Chesterfield, Oldham, Oldham, Chesterfield. Chesterfield, Brick, James Norwood, you know. Uh, mm. It was literally that. Um, they both came from League One and they're both goal scorers in League One. So, yes, Cavs, like, that's no shadow of a doubt it was that. I feel like the old manager, um, he, 
he didn't really get the squad going. Uh, um, but Mickey Mellon's come in. Mickey Mellon's come in and Mickey Mellon's done a fantastic job with them. And they've recruited them. Do you know what? Yeah, I'm going to bring this boy's name up again. Yeah, but I, 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 we need to find Gus a job for being on the I'm just pointing it out there. I'm just pointing it out there. Because <laughs> he, he always comes with the maddest things. And he just, he was, we were talking to him and he's like, look, Oldham are tired of the league. It gets to a point where everyone gets tired of the National League and now it's time to get out. So they've just got signed Andrew Dallas, Ghana. They've, they've gone and recruited heavy in January. Yeah. And it's like, we've had enough of this. We're getting out of there. You know, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, no, Cavs, facts. Facts after Chesterfield is older, man. I, I still think that Oldham are gonna make playoffs. Obviously, the eighth right now, they're just outside the playoffs. Yeah, you know? I think they're gonna they're gonna make the playoffs, and I think they're gonna make it comfortably, if I'm being honest with you. And that's one team that you do not want to play playoffs. Yeah, I I totally agree with you, Femi. Um, there was definitely Oldham, Chesterfield, and yeah, I I Stand by everything Femi said there. They're, they're a club with the stature, they're a club with the fan base, um, the players now as well. And as Gus said, you're right, sometimes you just get to a point where you say, no, enough is enough. We need to get out of here. <laughs> I've had enough of this. Um, but special mention to Joe Nutt as well. We've got a good deadline day move to Cheltenham. Um, so congratulations to him. Hope he goes out there and does his thing. Um, and then going back to the league, we've got York City versus Maidenhead. Nathaniel George popping up the goal in that one. Will Davis, that one ended up in a 1-1. Um, obviously, two clubs that I've played for. Um, it'll be interesting. York are definitely, they've got a club with money in the same stature as Oldham, I feel. Um, I feel like they'll be the next team next season that'll be looking to do something as well. It's just that there's always seems to be a bit of a cloud around that, around that club. Um, but it seems like it's brightening up in these last recent months. But we left the game to last, our game, um, a, definitely a six-pointer. Bournemouth versus Woking. Woking being at home. They had two of our former players, Dion Kelly Evans and Denon Lewis. We ran out one nil winners, despite another red card to another one of our strikers. Last week, it was Ty Marsh. <laughs> this week, it was Lee. Um, we're not going to talk about the referees because... I got a yellow card for sitting on the bench for basically somebody, Femi and another player went up for the ball. The guy swiped Femi's leg, so Femi's landed on his neck. Femi, how's your neck, by the way? Is it all right? Do you um, know, like, like, I was so high in the air. So high. I had time to think about my landing. Do you know how <laughs> high? I'm like, all right, am I going to land? Am I going to put my arm out here to protect? But I don't want to dislocate my shoulder. So I'm thinking <laughs> back and just feel the pain. I thought about all this. Well, you didn't you didn't think about it properly. You land on your neck. You land on your neck. But at that point, at that point, obviously, teammate, brother, friend, family, I've jumped up and been like, ref. The line always looked at me and said, Jamal, stop running towards me. Ref comes over to me, gives me a yellow card. I'm like, oh my days. And you already know what we get fined for getting descent at Paul Wheelchair. So my head was already gone. So then I'm thinking, if I go on, I can't even make one tackle. Ended up going on. We saw out right the game. And um Andrew Belanta popped up a goal in the 14th minute. So for a good, I'd say 60 minutes, we played with 10 men. And what a win, man. Blocks all over the pitch. Ash pulling off saves, Bushy pulling off blocks, Femme getting in there, Cabs doing more running than you probably expected to do. Uh, just a great win and, and a win that we really, really needed, you know. So, well done, team. We live to fight another day, climbing up the right way at the table. Um, but, Cabs, first game back. How did you see it? Femme, we'll come back to you after. You know what? I was really, really excited for it, you know. Like, I was really looking forward to it. Obviously, working one of those grounds where, like, I think, personally, like, I've always had a good record there, you know, in terms of goal scoring, you know. Um, but I think the sending off, like, I think I was actually enjoying it. The sending off obviously kind of took us, like, a step back a bit in terms of, you know, the dominance, you know, side of the game in their third. 
Um, I think that kind of changed the, the 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 structure about how we our game. But luckily, uh, we got that goal early on, you know, through Balanta, who I think um, was sort of like, which helped us massively, um, you know. But I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't for once. I think even after the sending off, I think I felt more assured, you know, collectively as a unit, you know, defensively um, after, to be fair, which was quite surprising because you usually think, usually when you go down to 10 men, you know, it's supposed to, you know, feel harder. But I think we defended that game quite well and I think we looked quite sharp on the break. So I think there's plenty more for us to come, um, you know, I think especially more from the attackers, I think we've got to show a lot more. Um, obviously, we've got to try and finish the game with 11 players on the pitch, so we're going to have to try and find a way to sort of find an improvement on that. Yeah. Ben, what about you? Yeah, it was probably one of my favourite wins um, of the season because yeah. it had everything. You know, um, it had the red card. Unfortunately, it was, um, it was us, but that's what made it a, a great win because all right we're one new up we're going to defend this and it's now rolling your sleeves up showing heart you know um last ditch tackles all of that and we done that and from player one to 11 honestly second half i thought everyone one was one to 11 or <laughs> one to ten <laughs> and, and, and the people and, and including people coming off the bench as well you know what i mean um yeah, everyone on the pitch, everyone that played a part, you know, I thought I thought was immense. I thought they, they really gave it everything. And it was a deserved win, you know. I don't think even though Woken look well with ten men, so they're gonna they're gonna um, have majority of the ball. I don't think they really hurt us. I don't think they really hurt us, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I feel like Cabs, you showed your value immediately, you know, when the defense needed that break. You know, you you done what you needed to do. You know, you held the ball up, you travelled with it, um, and you just gave us that breather and took the sting out of the game for us at at, at times. So, so yeah, big up you, um, Balana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you talk about Cobbs, we got play for the club. I see things a mile off. That boy was always going to score yesterday. <laughs> he dispatched. Everything from Monday to Friday, like everything, like he's it was different, you, you know what I mean. And I was not surprised one piece. I re, everyone, everyone knows about Balanta, you know, I, everyone knows what he does, and I think he's an incredible player. But yeah, just, just that week that he had, and the way he was dispatching everything, like anything that came off his foot was a go, 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 go. So yeah, same, same, same thing on Saturday. Like he got the, the ball came. Oh, I've been there before. I was here on Thursday. Or I was here on Tuesday. Long go, like yeah. you know what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, like well deserved, well deserved, big win, big win. Talk us, talk, talk us through your Karate Kid, Mister Miyagi versus Daniel Sun moment, Master versus Apprentice. Oh um, yeah, that 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 was a full circle moment, you know. Um, and it was it was it was nice to see. Obviously, Jaden Luca. Um, he signed on loan to Woking from Luton. Um, it, it's crazy because I used to I, I used to coach him when I coached at Lambeth Tigers, and it's he, it's his his story is very interesting because he didn't sign for a pro club until he turned um, to a scholar. So he was at Lambeth, and I coached him when he was at under sixteen. So he didn't even get a scholarship immediately, but then. Um, as a first year, he finally got to Luton, and then that's when he finally got his he's deal at Luton, and he's been flying ever since. And he just signed a new contract before before they sent him on loan to Woking. But um, yeah, it was it was it was a crazy moment. And what I didn't know that he's gonna play directly against me. That's what I didn't know. So it was like <laughs> I coached you, but I could not let you get one over me now. Like. That's just gonna be crazy. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. So after the game, um, after the game, I told him a couple more years. <laughs> no, nice moment. He, he's a really good player. I uh, looks like he's really enjoying his football as well. Um, so yeah, that's the roundup of the fixtures. 
Um, now we come on to the last part of the show, Cabs, where we talk about advice. Yeah, hold that quickly. Can I um, ask Cabs a question? And I'm going to have a question. I've got two questions. Yeah. So, first question. Yeah. You see, XG, a lot of people say, it's very important we discuss this. A lot of people say XG, and what, people, what XG is expected goals, expected crosses, expected this. A lot of people say it's rubbish. A lot of people say it doesn't make sense. We have got someone here that believes in this thing to a T in Kams yeah. manga. Kams, <laughs> can you explain why you believe in this so much? <laughs> XG is everything in football. <laughs> Bro, football, I think football's evolved. Like, I think we can all agree that Ever since, you know, Ronaldo and Messi started hitting the stage and literally they were just the stats, 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 stats. I think that just changed everything. I think in terms of talking on more XG, as a forward, as a striker, um, you want to be getting as many chances as possible in games. Like, I would be more than happy to go away in a game I've missed three chances, but I know that I've had the chances. Whereas if I go out of another game and say we've won 2 0, but I haven't had one chance, I'll be more worried. So I think, in terms of looking at it in that aspect, a lot of, I think, like the higher managers, um, you know, they're all quite keen on that. They're all quite keen on making sure that. They know that if you've got a forward that has three or four chances a game, more than likely he's going to take two of them. Right. So right. I think it's very, very important um, for forwards to sort of not be too deflated when, say, if they've had three chances and they've missed all three. At least you know you're coming off the back of that game thinking, you know what, at least I've had three chances. And you know that, okay... So I need to work on this. So then you get back to the training ground, you work on what you need to do to make sure that when those chances do come again, you put them in the back of the net. But um, in terms of, yeah, the stats, you two know me quite well in terms of stats. I've always been a stat man. So even if, I've, if, even if the manager wants to bring me on for 10 minutes, if you can confirm with me that, I'm not just holding up the lead and I'm going to get two chances, then I'll be happy. As long as that one in one is there, I'm satisfied. But yeah, nah, I think, I think, I think I've always been a number man. Um, but that's always, I've looked up to sort of like the bigger names and, you know, and seeing what they've done. So I think as a, as a forward, you should always try to emulate, you know, um, sort of like the best players. Hundred percent. That was incredible, I must say. Um, and this leads me to my second question now. And I don't want no one sitting on the fence here. Look, we know the transfer window hasn't closed yet, you know. But we know in our in our division, um, the National League goes on till March. Now it's funny because the York York City chairman saw all the business happening. And did you see his tweet? I didn't see it. So obviously, a lot of business was happening on deadline day, and he must have tweeted. I think people are forgetting that the National League window is not closed yet. Like, something like that, like you know. But um, yeah, it, it got lots of retweets. It, it was funny. It was funny, isn't it? It was funny. A little bit of a jab. Like, I, like, I like him. I like. I like him a lot. I like him. A, bit of a jab at other clubs, but hey, hey, like, you know what I mean. But. Um, yeah, so National League window closes closes in March, but like I said, there was a lot of big business done in in January. Who is your signing of the window? What National League signing of the window? Newcastle. I'm not sitting on the fence, but I already know my answer. I know my answer as well. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a couple of names. We obviously have Luke Freeman, which we spoke highly about. Yeah. We obviously have Andrew Dallas. Yeah. Joe Garner. Yeah. <laughs> we have Kongo Tishmanga. Yeah. 
He was he was to be had. He was to be had. Yeah. Courtney Senior. Courtney Senior is gone. We've got Luke Waterfall. We've got Otis Khan. We've got Luke Waterfall. So we've got we've got we've got we've got some we've got some 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 heavy heavy signings. Yeah. Who is go in terms of like who's going to deliver? Who who do you think is the signing of the window? The signing of the window for me, and I'm not just saying this. I go off of what does the club need. I go off of what the player represents. I go off of character. So within that, we were struggling for goals. And we brought in cabs. Now, that for me is a signing because, let's be honest, Woking brought in Curtis Edwards who is a ball player midfielder. They've already got that in Jermaine Anderson. You know, uh, Andrew Dallas come in, Joe Garner come in, but you're not forgetting, you've got James Norwood. So for me, it's got to be Cabs. Simply because look at where Bournemouth are and look what Cabs represents. I'm not just saying that because you're my boy. I'm not just saying that because you're in front of me. That is actually who I believe it is. Unless but, um, Bromley brought in Deji again. But... Your defence is solid. So, and no disrespect to the strikes we already got at the club, but yeah, man, it's got to be cabs. It's got to be. And, I now, and I went first, Fem, because I, I think you might say the same thing, but now you can't say the same thing. Uh, I'm saying the same thing. I don't care. You can't say the same thing. See, cabs, I know Femi too well. You can't say the same thing. We're double stamping this one. We're double stamping this one. And cabs, I'm not even saying this to under pressure. No, oh, do you know what, oh, Fem? Fem, you yeah. do. We're going about this all wrong, man. We're going. We're not. We're not treating cabs how we used to. We're giving them too much, too much love. Oh, cabs! Oh, cab. Do you know what it is? Ox cab. I show him tough love, like, <laughs> like I'm tough. When I need to be tough, but I give him love when I need to give him love. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I'm gonna double stamp this one. I'm gonna say cabs just simply because I know you personally. I know your character. I know your mindset. I know that. Listen, you see when someone has something to prove, yeah? Cabs is, you might think Cabs is calm, relaxed, but you see that this boy, he's a killer. Like, he's got a demi, he's got that chip on his shoulder. He just knows how to, he just knows how to, to handle it and, and, and move with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Where other people may not know how to do that. So don't forget, he's got a chip on his shoulder and he, he's, he's here for vengeance as well like so all of that he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna deliver man he's gonna deliver and and do you know what even though we didn't score yesterday there was mad value shown already like you know what I mean like mad value so yeah I, I put I put all my money on I put all my money on my boy you know? honorable mention though Phil mm -hmm. Brown mm -hmm. hey Phil Brown might be the sign of the window as well by the way oh yeah that's another one to be fair even though he's not a player even though he's not a player, look, Dak has went uh, South End. Your boy Jaden Luca went Woken, Dallas. There's a lot of players out there. That's there, there's there's some big signings, man. Some big signings, and there's a lot of losses. But yeah, Ben Reeves as well went to Eastley. Eastley had a lot of a, a, a lot going on. Um, ben Greenwood, um, David Long King went Eastley. David Long King, so. Again, Dion Woodman went Willstone. There's loads. There's loads. There's this, and this is what it is. This is what the National League is. There's so many things going on, so many things happening. Yeah, there's all sorts. Um, Adam Thompson as well went to uh, Barnet, by the way. Oh Barnet yeah, from Orion. But go on, Cabs. You can't. You can't name yourself, Cabs. You can't name yourself. Mm. Up the window. Joe Garner's massive man. I'm going to have to go for Freeman, you know. I think that would be my pick. Um, obviously, I think it was a close toss between him and Joe Gardner. Obviously, we know Joe Gardner has obviously, has obviously been a handful in the league. Everyone knows what he's about. I can't obviously, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I think we were playing against him uh, when I was at Fleetwood. And obviously, we were working on shape and whatnot. You know, getting us prepared to... to, 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 to 
to go toe to toe and go to war against him. To be fair, so um, he's obviously a great striker um, that has done very very well in the EFL. Uh, EFL but I think can't get promoted to the Prem and then nah, can't lie. And then go to Violet. So I think that one there has to be the signing of the season. I think. So Luke Freeman. Luke Freeman, yeah? Luke Freeman, yeah, 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 yeah. Luke, Luke, Luke Freeman. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Fem, does that satisfy your question? Yeah, for sure. All right. All right, cool. Um, next one, Cabs. The best advice you've ever been given or what advice do you wish you heard when you was younger? This is one for the younger um, generation that are watching, trying to become the best players that they can be. I think, yeah, it's a great question, you know. Um, I don't know how to answer that. I think I can sort of just look at myself and, you know, Look at my journey. Um, and I think the best advice that I can possibly give to a youngster is to not be afraid. Like, don't be afraid to, 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 don't be afraid to demand of yourself. Mm. Don't be afraid to demand of yourself. Because I think growing up for me, that's something that I lacked. Like, I lacked. I lack the confidence to believe in myself to be able to, like, a 17, 18 year old, like, when I was at MK, like, I'm looking at someone who's who's got so much more experience than me, um, but he isn't obviously scoring goals, but back then I had that belief in me that I can do it, but you're not necessarily, but I wasn't necessarily confident enough to be able to go to the manager's door and knock and be like, Gaffer, like, give me a chance. Because we all know what it's like being so young, like, you know, you're kind of like shy and, and whatnot. So I think for me personally, not being afraid, not being afraid, I think if the, if, 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 if the opportunity doesn't arise for you to sort of get, minutes at at the young age that you feel like as if you know you should at your parent club don't be afraid to go out alone don't be afraid to to go out into like men's football and you know learn your trade because you know that's one thing that i think i wish throughout my career because i actually started like the non-league journey from a young age i, I think i started for around 17 18 mm. so i started it from quite young but if you were to ask me, could would 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 I have done any, any, anything different? I would have done it a bit earlier because I think it helped me a lot. It helped me so much, like learning, you know, the trait of the game and all of that. So I think my sort of biggest advice or my biggest thing that I would I think youth would be to. To not be afraid, to not be afraid and demand, demand like we see it now, like there's players playing for City, you know, fighting to get into the first team. And you look at that squad, and we were sitting on TV and you know, we're applauding them week in and week out. Yeah. But like the demands, the you know, the demands are there, but I think as a player, you've got to believe in yourself, like you know what. I'm good enough to compete with the, with uh, with, um, with um, these people. So you've got to demand that within yourself. I think. Hundred percent. That would be my word. Yeah. Hundred percent. I love that. I love to hear that, man. It's it's just pure belief. Um, I think that's something that can definitely help the next ones coming through. Um, and lastly, is the part of the show called the word of the week. Now, this is what this is a word that we take into the week to help us through, whether it's going well, whether it's going bad, this is the word that we keep close and we remind ourselves of. Um, so one word, and it could be anything, Cabs. Um, I'm going to let Femi start off, give you some more time to think, then I'll go. 
and then we'll finish off with you, Cab. So, Fem, what's your word of the week, my boy? Our word of the week this week is um, a word Cab's mentioned earlier, right at the beginning of the episode, is faith. You know, faith is everything, you know. Um, and for the people that don't believe in God, the best way to explain faith is just another level of belief. That's, that's, that's the best way. But I feel like um, having faith in God, having faith that things will work out, having faith that this is going to go the right way, um, I feel like it carries you. It carries you. And faith has carried me my whole life. It has carried me my whole life, you know. And I wouldn't know where I would be if I lacked faith, you know. Um, I grew up in a Christian household. Um my my parents, my pastors. So I've always I've, they've always instilled that in me. They've always instilled that in me. So I just encourage everyone to just find faith and just believe in it. You know, believe in it. And that's not even word of the week. That's just life. Like just 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 have faith in everything you're doing. If you're gonna make this move or you're gonna make this decision, just have faith that it will work out. You know and. Well, I think I'm, I'm, I'm. I think I've got a lot of people that that show that as well, and that inspires me as well. And you know, when you, it's like when you, when you do something and it ends up working out, yeah, it increases your faith. Does that make sense? Like, it increases your faith. So you might not have the most faith at the beginning, but then when you do something and it works out, oh, okay, I'm going to believe I could do this now, and your faith increases and. So I just encourage everyone to just try and find their faith this week. Mm. I like that one, fam. I like that one. My word of the week is bet. And to, to broaden that, it's bet on you, you know. Um, everything starts with you. So for me, I like to bet on myself. And instead of thinking, oh, what's the worst that could happen? I always try to think, okay, what great possibilities could come from betting on myself and what can ha possibly happen that can come from this? You know, there's so much, there's so many times where we think about, oh yeah, what can we do? And maybe I shouldn't do it because, and sometimes you just got to bet on yourself, man. Um, and word to Cabs, that word come, you you inspired it as well, Cabs, because of the things that, how you bet on yourself throughout your career. Um, and that's what I try to do. So always think about, the positives that can come out of it rather than the negatives. And I promise you, when you bet on yourself, there's no one else to blame. You know, there's always times when, oh yeah, I didn't do, I might not do it because of so-and-so, or I might not do it, I didn't do this because of so-and-so. But when you bet on yourself, it's all you, man. It's all you, yeah. so. Cabs? I think, I, I, think, I think betting on yourself is probably the safest bet though. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's so crazy. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. It's the, it's the safest bet, 100%. A 100%. Um, cabs, round us off, please. Ooh, what would my word be? You know what? I think mine would be... Mine, mine would be kind of similar to both of you. I think mine would be peace, you know. Mm. Mine would be peace. I think be at peace with within yourself, be at peace within yourself and just trust, trust the pathway, trust, trust the, 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 the process, you know, um, you know, like the sort of, we always hear that saying in football of the never too high, never too low, like, yeah. just be at peace, be at peace with, 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 with whatever journey you're on, like, you know, if you're going through it, embrace it, you know, because you know that within that, within that phase where, you know, that's, that's tough, you're building within yourself something that you don't know. Mm. Um, and I think during the good as well, still being content, don't get too excited with, oh, like, the good's really the good and, you know, stay 
like don't let it get the better of you. So I think my sort of word for the week would to just be yeah, man, be at peace, man, be at peace, be at peace within yourself. I love that. So we got faith, bet, and peace. Do you know what? I think that rounds off a phenomenal episode, man. Like we've always had you in the back of our minds, cabs, to get you on. That was that was always going to happen, um, but. I didn't think it would be as good as this. I'm not going to lie. Like, this episode has actually been amazing. And I'm not just saying that. I'm, I'm sure Femi would reiterate that as well and echo that. It's been everything It's been everything that I thought would be a more, man. So thank you for coming on. Um, thank you for sharing us your knowledge and your time. Um, and yeah, man. Obviously, we're, well, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you. You're, you're with us now, isn't it? So I'll see you, but... Thank you, man. It's back. It's, um, it's all this niceties. Yeah, it, it, it ends. It ends as soon as this Zoom call ends. So <laughs> get ready for it. It was a good yeah, time. I appreciate it, though, man. Okay. Thank you for having me, man. Obviously, it it took a long, 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 long time, but um, I think I'm happy to be here, man. I'm happy to be here. Obviously, I watch. I actually watch what you guys do. Obviously, like the players' life and. It's always important, I think, for me to sort of get insight on, you know, on how people sort of... I'm always, like, intrigued to understand and, you know, know people's perspective. Yeah. How they view life and... It's always challenging for me because, like, I think to myself, like, damn, like... You can always nip, like, so many things from different people. Yeah. And I think, obviously, like, what you guys got going on is incredible, man, so... I'd say big up, even though that it took you 10 years to get me on board, but yeah, man, keep it up. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate Ben, what did you say there? I, I missed that. Yo, yeah, Cavs, what time we in the gym tomorrow, bro? Don't be late. Look at his face. Wait, you said, you said we're not training? Well, the message is going to come through any anytime soon. Bro. Hey, we're training, we're training. We train every day. What are you talking about, Cavs? What are you talking about? Yeah. What time we in? Bro, you see how much I ran this. I've never ran like I, I, that's the first time ever I've ran that much, you know, ever, ever. Hey, welcome back, welcome back to Barnwood, my man. <laughs> oh, but Fem, I, bro, I forgot to say, are we, are we, are we gonna talk about your high intensity run? Come on, are we, are we, are we gonna talk about it? Why is it low? Damn. Hey, you listen. know what? You know what? We'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save it. We'll it. Save it. It's definitely up there, but you probably got more than me. But it's not alone. No, nah, this, this is giving a glimpse. This is giving everyone a glimpse. This is the glimpse that everyone gets to see of why we are where we are. Because all we do, I told Cavs, no, 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 we can have this out now because obviously, Cavs, I told Cavs, we need to work on his speed, innit? You know, yeah. <laughs> we need to work on Cavs' speed. That's what I told him. Oh, okay, Cavs. Is that why you're saying that? Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just saying, innit? I'm not trying to put it out there, but obviously. We'll work on it as well, man. We'll work on it. We'll do shot as well. I don't know. Like, Jamal, we're going to have to get him out there. <laughs> hey, we'll get him out there. <laughs> High intensity runs. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Say no. <laughs> but, but no, this has been great. Thanks, close us up. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching another episode of Beyond the 92. Please like, subscribe, share, you know, um, show a friend. Just help push the show as much as possible. But we appreciate your time. And that's goodbye from me. Enjoy. Thanks for watching.